Watch the finishing blow. Tyson versus Tyson. Everyone thinks they know who would win, but let's take a step back. Fury is 6 foot 9, 270 pounds, and the heavyweight champion of the world. In his prime, Iron Mike was 5 foot 10, 220 pounds, and the baddest man on the planet. On paper, it almost seems unfair. Fury is 50 pounds heavier, has a 14 inch reach advantage, and he's almost an entire foot taller. But what Mike lacked in size, he made up for in speed, skill, and of course, power. It's pretty much a coin toss who you think would win, but it got me thinking. Taking a look at the division today, it feels like just about every heavyweight is an ultra-sized, bulked up monster of a man. From near 7 footers to absolute units pushing 300 pounds, it seems like the glamour division is taller today than ever before. Are heavyweights getting bigger? Or does the so-called little guy still have a chance in today's game? Well, there's only one way to find out. This is Nikolai Valuev. In 2005, he became the first and only 7-footer to become a heavyweight world champion. And at 320 pounds, his fighting style wasn't exactly pretty to watch. The tallest champ ever proved that sheer size alone is enough to earn a heavyweight title. But the Russian giant was clumsy, unskilled, and ultimately the product of selective matchmaking. His ogre stature did him zero favors against David Hay, who outmoved, outboxed, and even rocked him despite being 100 pounds lighter. So it's obvious that at a certain point, size starts to limit a fighter's skill and speed. Muhammad Ali famously outclassed 6'6 Ernie Terrell, and Mike Tyson did, well, Mike Tyson things to his taller opponents. But comparing today's champions with the greats of the past really puts things in perspective. Sonny Liston, arguably the most terrifying heavyweight ever, was only 6'1", 215 pounds. Big George Foreman, known for using his size to seek and destroy, was 6'3", 220. Certainly not tiny men by any means, but they'd be dwarfed by a 6'7", Deontay Wilder, or a 280-pound Ji Lei Zhang. Today, Alexander Usyk is considered severely undersized, but he's the exact same height and weight as prime Muhammad Ali. Which begs the question, are heavyweights really getting bigger and taller? Would the greatest of all time be too small to become champion today? Well, here are the average heights of the Ring Magazine's annual top 5 heavyweights dating back to 1968. Ali starts us off and we see the 70s level out at just under 6 foot 3. These dips in the late 80s can be attributed to 5'10 Mike Tyson. Tyson goes to jail, Lennox Lewis becomes champ, Tyson gets out of jail, and 5'10 Roy Jones Jr. skews the early 2000s. Then, we have the Klitschko era. Brothers Vladimir and Vitaly dominated the division at 6'6 and 6'7, until Tyson Fury took the crown in 2015. Since then, the likes of Fury, Wilder, and Joshua have kept it a tall man's game. Of course, there are skinny tall guys and fat short guys, but the numbers don't lie. We are in the era of the super heavyweight. The top 3 heavyweights from 2020 make the top 3 heavyweights from 1970 look like cruiserweights. In fact, everyone in the top 10 today is taller and heavier than the golden standard Muhammad Ali. But are they better? After Alexander Usyk outclassed Anthony Joshua in the rematch, AJ had a mental breakdown live on the mic. But amidst his frustrations, he said something pretty interesting. I'm not a 12 round fighter. Look at me. I'm a new breed of heavyweights. All them heavyweights, Mike Tyson, Sonny Liston, Jack Dempsey. Oh yeah, you don't throw combinations like Rocky Marciano. Cause I ain't 14 stone, that's why. I'm 18 stone, I'm heavy. It's hard work. Self-admittedly, Joshua's muscles take more oxygen, slow him down, and tire him out. Sure, he's bigger and stronger and looks like Adonis, but all that bulk takes away from the most important thing, his boxing. Is the size to bully and knock out smaller guys worth the sacrifice in pure, technical, 12-round skill? I might just favor the guys in the bottom row against the juggernauts in the top row. Which makes the undisputed showdown between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk infinitely more interesting. Tyson Fury is huge, but he's also absurdly fast and skilled. Usyk is the smaller man, but let's not forget he is the exact same size as the greatest. 
In a clash between two technicians, the blueprint for the ideal heavyweight champion will emerge. Did we have it right in the 70s? Or are the Giants here to stay? Oh, and what about little Mike Tyson? Could a 5'10", discipline-obsessed, power-punching maniac ever become champion again? Well, we know what Fury thinks. How, how do you think yeah, you would better versus Mike Tyson? Yeah, yeah. Prime versus prime. Yeah, I think Mike Tyson would knock me out in about 30 seconds. If you believe Mike Tyson or Muhammad Ali could beat Fury, then you have to think Usyk at least has a chance. But interestingly enough, this may not even be the toughest fight of Usyk's career. Check out this video to see how he almost lost and why most people want to see him lose.